Manchester United were methodically dismantled by Roberto De Zervi's Brighton side. Questions to be asked for sure. But first, the United twins need to speak about it. Blessings to everybody inside, including yourself, my guy Cappy. In the oh, car. Nah. To start the game, I was impressed. Fairly impressed. It had been a turbulent international break. Oh. Unnecessary disagreements leading to journalistic roller coasters. And let's not forget the disappearances too. If you know, you know. <sighs> Don't forget about that one. Oh, so after we settled after a couple of minutes and put together some nice attacking moves, my positivity about the game itself started to rise. Wouldn't say I'm quite on the electrifying goosebump levels of The Rock's return on Friday Night Smackdown, Ooh. but... Nah, it's still far off. I'm not going <laughs> to lie to you guys. I'm not going to lie. But oh, in all seriousness, bro. if there was one player that really caught the eye in the infant stages of that game, it was Marcus Rashford because he looked to be direct. We know how great he is when he looks to take on guys, when he's confident, driving to the byline, uh, making threatening runs beyond the defense. And that's exactly what he was doing, making dangerous runs, taking on whoever was defending him. And if we were to score a goal, it looked like it was either going to be scored or assisted by that man himself. Hmm. We had a different tactical setup for this game as well. Some form of a narrow 4-1-2-1-2, which early on and in small spurts aimed to prevent Brighton from having complete freedom in central areas. We all know how excellent at times the Seagulls can be in possession, and as soon as we allowed them to, to gain confidence, problems were around the corner. It was really strange because even after watching back the game, it's almost like the players just threw the game plan out the uh. window. We dropped in intensity. Brighton were constantly finding the likes of Pascal Gloss, who, in my opinion, was a standout performer for the opposition and always seems to find a way of turning up against us. The first goal we conceded included exactly what I spoke about before in terms of Brighton finding those central areas while delivering quick one and two touch football from back to front. Simona Dingler is on the right hand side, he delivers a low, a low cross that Adam Lallana smartly leaves for Danny Welbeck who is completely free inside our area. Upon further investigation, I see Casemiro and Scott McTominay who are both trailing the play and didn't possess urgency to get back into the correct position and prevent what had happened or what was going to happen in past tense. Ladies and gentlemen, see ya. Sometimes with this team, you never know what you're going to get. We go 1-0 down and all of a sudden, that is what it took to wake us up. And then the total opposite could take place where heads, shoulders, knees and toes all submit. They all find a way to submit. Safe to say that the latter transpired. But not before we felt jubilation for Rasmus Hoyland, who we all thought had equalised on his old Trafford debut. Marcus Rashford, as he usually does, found himself at the byline, where he just squeezed in a low cross, where the Danish international controlled, swiveled, and found the goal. Good finish. Unfortunately, the officials discovered through VAR that the ball was out of play before Rasmus was even in the picture. So instead of it being game on five minutes before half time, we needed to pick ourselves back up again after slight disappointment. Early in the second half, I would say it returned to that feel out process, a little less feisty in comparison to the first half start. Brighton definitely took it upon themselves, however, to maintain their on ball dominance as quick as possible by finding and moving the ball into small pockets of space. And that led to their second goal through Pascal Gloss. That man again. <laughs> A lovely switch of play out to Mitoma, who took a couple touches. Tariq Lamptey receives quick feet there as the ball trickles across the area, only to be picked up by the unrunning Gross, who fakes out Lissandro and drills one past Andre Onana. There's been a lot of conversation about Andre Onana. I think people kind of need to you know, pump the brakes. Hundred. Pump the brakes on that one Hundred. because, you know, it, it, in certain games, I'm sure there's been discussions of maybe he should have saved this, maybe he should have done better with that. He, you know, he's he's good with his feet, da, 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 but is he that good of a shot stopper? 
so far we've been we've been given a small sample size so let's pump the brakes and calm down with the the sheer negativity uh, the vicious cycle that's you know happening once is. again you know it draws one pass or none and unless that is now pascal gross's seventh goal in 11 league appearances against the red devils he sure does Ooh. love to play as an it more ways than one it, it's funny maybe it's not because <sighs> when i was taking notes during the game i just ended up writing manchester united the masters of their own demise on and off the pitch it's like a movie it's like an, a novel almost sad we have to keep on speaking in this manner but it's clear that there are players out there who suffer from inconsistencies on the pitch can it be cured i don't know oh. while away from that we have guys running the club who are clearly not well equipped to do so Put that all together and the image is like the dog sitting in the middle of a room engulfed in flames. Either way, you're walking into the fire or it's going to catch you slipping. I don't even need to explain the Jao Pedro goal to make you guys understand how we were lit up unlike the Houses of Parliament in 1605. I would like to, to quickly, however, congratulate Hannibal Mejri who scored his first senior Manchester United goal with a sweet strike from long range. Yeah. Even if it was a consolation, a good moment from him. And there were some people on social media criticizing him for his light celebrations. I mean, come on, man. What are we doing today? Guys will speak about them taking the, the, the emotions out of the game through the things like VAR and, and changing rules to to take away dissent or just players showing emotion yeah. in general and then you complain about stuff like this make it make sense ah oh boy overall it's it's never a good sign when fans leave early decisions are booed even though the rasmus hoyland sub was something i understood due to the fact that he arrived with a back injury and you didn't want to instantly throw him into the deep end and, and you know, heavy minutes, it can do numbers on the body. Trust me, we've seen that before. We have seen that before. He came off the bench in both international games for Denmark and played about 75 minutes combined. I will say that part of the reason why things went wrong on Saturday are due to the lack of adjustments Ten Hag and the team make during games. And that most definitely is an area I would like to see the Dutchman improve upon because in tight situations, or even ones that seem to be getting away from you, like Saturday once again, that's how you can turn things around. Not always guaranteed, but a valuable skill nonetheless. This 22's view segment is all about you. Rhyming, on the beat. But anyway, on Twitter, the YouTube community tab, we've asked you to have your say about the game. And the same will be said about news we're going to be covering in the next few United Twins episodes. So look out for that. CM22ENT on Twitter and the YouTube community tab. Subscribe if you're new. Without a further ado, let's see some comments. So we got Manj in the cut over on Twitter saying pick to part part two premiering after the game against Bayern on Wednesday and he's referring to the thumbnail that we put out on Twitter on Instagram YouTube community tab asking you guys to have your say on the game now funny enough man like CM kind of said on Twitter he's looking forward to it. if we can find our attacking boots then it could be an interesting game on Wednesday at the Alliance yep. but right now I would also understand why a lot of Manchester United fans, including myself, fear that travel over to Germany in our very first Champions League game of the season. It could be a sticky one. The saving grace we do have is that Bayern Munich, based off of what I've seen, are not really at their best and they haven't been at their best for quite a while under Thomas Tuchel. Got a couple people here. Shout out to Realist United and shout out to Super Nick over on Twitter. Realist said, poor mentality across the pitch. Some look like they didn't want to even be on the pitch. Super Nick said, told ya, the tools are downing. 
And then Reed just said, still ain't Ten Hag. It's poor mentality. It's been here years now. And until we get it, uh, get get them out, sorry, it will continue to happen. And I do agree. Me and Cappy have spoken on numerous occasions about the mentality. Can the mentality of some of these players be cured? I'm not too sure. And if not, it would have to result in getting rid of them and resetting and, and replacing them with, uh, you know, better players who who do possess the mentality to push each other forward and to play as a collective group, which right now I just haven't been able to see on a consistent yeah. basis. In regards to the Ten Hag point, all I will say is where do we go from here if Eric Ten Hag ends up getting sacked? What I will say is I'm extremely worried because I'm seeing things in Eric Ten Hag that we potentially didn't see last season. And that is worrying because we, we've gone down this road before where managers kind of change their demeanor they change their whole outlook of what it means to be the manchester united manager once a, a series of incidents and, and and stuff just begin to happen and all of a sudden that sack race and and the talk and the noise starts to ramp up so i am worried in that regard but to to the manchester united fans who are already Ellington Hag, I, I would ask you where do we go from here because we, we've tried everything we've done everything and the only constant that remains are the owners some of the players to be fair yes indeed and some of the board members operating within this club and i wouldn't even count the change of getting rid of ed woodward same thing <laughs> as a as a proper change i think that's really like for like in my opinion what do you guys think in the comments Large ups to Paxton once again here every week saying we are going to struggle for months to come and it doesn't look easy right now. It ain't easy. It does not look easy at all. All we can do is hope that we will find some form. We will sort out the situation. But as it stands, things are looking bleak. I mean, speaking about the injury record, we just found out today that Aaron Wambasaka will be out for several weeks after picking up a hamstring injury towards the end of that Brighton fixture. So when it rains, it pours once again. Ladies and gentlemen, as one door closes, another one opens. A trip to the beautiful Allianz Arena approaches with the sound of Champions League Knights returning. If you know, you just know. 8 p.m. Mm. UK time, Wednesday this week, so don't miss it. And for sure, we will be back returning, returning, reacting to the game a couple days later. So enjoy it, whether you're traveling, whether you're watching it on the TV, hopefully Manchester United can pull out a result. But for now, be sure to hit the like button and shout out to everybody that has reached the end of the video. The final stage of it. You're a real one. You're a real one. Slap a, slap a 22 in the comments if you reach the very end. So hit that like button. Subscribe if you're new. Share to your friends and frenemies. <laughs> Until the next time, we'll see you lost in us.